If you're looking for great restaurants and fun, then look no further than historic Old Town Portsmouth, where there's always something fun happening, especially on holidays like St. Patrick's Day. We'll tell you what they have in store for the holiday this year, and we'll have a visit from our friends at the Portsmouth Humane Society. That's coming up right here, right now, on this episode of Portsmouth Now. Welcome to this March 2024 episode of Portsmouth Now. I'm your host, Rob Lauer. As our first guest today, we're very happy to welcome back to Portsmouth Now, Diana Uchek, Executive Director of the Portsmouth Humane Society, who will tell us about the programs of this very essential nonprofit organization. Diana, welcome back to Portsmouth Now. Thanks for having us. Now, I want to start out talking a little bit about Portsmouth Humane Society so that people understand the Humane Society is not a branch of the government. I think most people think there, every town, city has a mayor, a dog catcher, and basically that's, you know, there's, it's a city thing. But you're not. You actually are a private organization that partners with the city. Exactly. But you're mostly relying on donations and the goodwill and help from, from the public. Yes, right. absolutely. Um, we're one of 13 shelters in the state of Virginia that is a private nonprofit that operates the shelter on behalf of the city. Oh. Every every city or locality in the state must have an animal shelter. <laughs> um, so we act on behalf of the city of Portsmouth, but you're right, we do operate on donations and the support of the public to make sure that the care that we provide goes above and beyond um, just minimum standards. That's great. Now, I, I was visiting your website and I, I love that you talked about your philosophy, the welfare of animals, but also strengthening the human animal bond. Yep. I think that's really cool. Because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about animal lovers. Definitely. <laughs> I think we get pigeonholed really easily, like, oh, you work with animals, you must not like people. But uh, at our organization, that's not true. We really put people at the center of the work that we do and we try to make sure that we're meeting the human need when we're helping them with their pet. Um, even the animal control officers that we work with, they really, we work to advocate for the pet um, owner to make sure that if there's something we can do to get the pet back home and keep yeah. them there, that we're going to intervene and offer that. Or even build relationships with human service organizations. So yeah. if we find that maybe they're having a housing issue or something, you know, uh, social services could help and step in, we might take the pet just for a little bit and then send them in the right direction because we know that even though there are a small number of people that maybe are unkind to animals, it takes a lot of very kind people to say yes to animals. I don't know why anybody <laughs> would even choose to have a pet if they didn't care. Yes, Because exactly. I mean, it's a living thing. It's a, you know, it's a family member. Yes, yes. But what are some of the services that, that you offer? Yeah. At our shelter, we do lost and found. If somebody finds an animal, we'll mm -hmm. try to coach them to get the pet back home or we'll take the animal in and work to reunite it with their family. Um, if uh, we obviously pet adoption, right? Um, yeah. If there are those pets whose owners simply cannot take them back home um, or they are lost and never get reconnected, then we'll put them up for adoption and okay. find them a place to go that will keep them forever and ever. Um, we have a pet food pantry, so pet owners that are, oh my gosh, twins. <laughs> um, heard food. <laughs> yes, they, they're like, mm, snack time. Um, pet food, pet food pantry. Mm -hmm. So if a pet owner, if the thing that the barrier that they're running into is just feeding their pet, yeah. then we're going to give them some pet food um, that we can to bridge the gap. Okay. Them. And people can donate food, canned food, dry food to exactly, that? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Canned food, dry food, any anything that we won't use in the shelter, we put it into our pet food pantry and um, offer it at no cost to the public. That's great. Now, I know at one, one point you had um, a program where people could like I must say, check out a dog, but at least you take a dog and take it for a walk and sort of 
see if they bond with it? Absolutely. So um, it's called Pause Around P-Town uh -huh. and it's a field trip program. Okay. So all you have to do is be over 18 and with a valid ID and we'll, you can check out a dog. And we ask for them to be out for at least two hours. So mm -hmm. that way they Big get a good you know, exercise. And exactly. All that. Um, so actually March 30th is take a dog for a walk day. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. it's a great time to try the program. It's easy. You don't have to sign up in advance. You just walk in and we're there at 8 a.m. You can start, fill out all the paperwork and hit the road. There's lots of great places to check out. <laughs> That's great. But what else do you have coming up in March or in the next few months? Mm -hmm. So March 29th, we are doing a foster speed dating event. So from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., we are going to do a little speed dating for <laughs> the public, people who are interested in fostering and maybe they want to get involved for the first time. Um, they'll fill out a questionnaire from our website in advance of the event and um, we'll match them. So we'll pick three pets mm -hmm. for them to preview before they come in. We'll let them meet them quickly and then we'll send them off. Oh, that's cool. That yeah. is great. Yep. That's great. Now, what type of fundraisers do you do throughout the year? I think you have one coming up later yep. in the spring, early summer? Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of May, May 3rd, we are doing our annual Arthur G. McGee. <laughs> golf tournament okay and that's going to be a bye to we this year okay uh, we had a great turnout last year so you know um by the way does a great job with um providing food and drinks and we have a really good time and then the pets come out and cause a little bit of chaos in the beginning of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we send them home early so they don't you know right take out any golf carts no where are you located? I know this is probably the great mystery. <laughs> it, it is a huge mystery. We are not easy to find. Um, we are at 4022 Seaboard Court, uh, and it's off Greenwood Drive, and you just have to keep following it around past all So basically you take 264 towards south, but you're still in mm -hmm. port, you can get off Greenwood Drive, and yeah, if yep. you're going north, it's like the first light, I think, or second light. Uh, it, it, not it's the right person tricky. to ask okay. for directions. It's right off Greenwood Drive. Now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. And if people wanted more information, what is your website? It's PortsmouthHumaneSociety.org. Okay, and they can find out anything they need there. Exactly. Now, are you closed any days a week? Are you open seven days a week? What are your hours? Uh, that's a really great question. So, for adoptions, we're open every day except for Tuesday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh huh. And we're there at the shelter. The doors are unlocked from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for people looking for lost and found pets who are people who have questions, interested in adoption, fostering. Mm -hmm. We're there to, to greet them. And you know, Google doesn't really um, let you go. Well, we're open for this, but we're not open <laughs> right. for that. So you kind of, uh, sometimes people I think don't realize we're there right at 8 a.m. So is there a number they could call just to make sure? There's yeah, idea. it's 757-397-6004. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for giving us that. Are you okay? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us again, Diana, really. And uh, thank you for everything that you do and thanks. your whole team. <laughs> and uh, really, be sure to support the Portsmouth Humane Society. This St. Patrick's Day weekend, there's lots of body Irish fun happening right here in Old Town Portsmouth. Here's Catherine Lyons from History of Life to tell us more about it. Catherine, welcome to Portsmouth Now. Well, thank you, sir. So tell me a little bit, how did you end up in Portsmouth? Well, I, I came um, around the turn of the century, the early 1800s. Uh, a lot of Irish come to America after the uh, Great Famine, uh, but some of us didn't wait that long. And so <laughs> I come earlier. Um, and so there used to be some, some row homes that were all the way down what you call Crawford Street now. Mm -hmm. And um, there's only one left, actually. <laughs> and if you go inside that, you'll see a, a walk-in fireplace and a 24-inch stair well that goes up to the loft, which is in the style of the cottages in Ireland mm -hmm. and that. Um, and mo most of us worked at the, or at least our men worked at the shipyard. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, like most immigrants, in close quarters, of course, and um, trying to earn enough money to bring some more folks over. Uh, very typical that way. But it didn't work out for us very well in 1855 because uh, during the yellow fever epidemic, of course we didn't know it was mosquitoes that caused it, uh, but us being living near the water, mm -hmm. close quarters, and our men working at the shipyard near the water, we were prime candidates for infection. Oh. And, so, and so it spread quite uh, fast through our community. And there was this lovely priest, Father Devlin at the time, mm -hmm. um, and he stayed and nursed the sick and uh, eventually succumbed to the fever, unfortunately. But um, 
but yeah, the Catholic Church, St. Paul's. In fact, we were very instrumental along with the French in the founding of that church. Up to oh, that point, the Irish had to go over to Norfolk if they wanted to worship us Catholics. Yeah. And so, um, and so that's just a little bit about, you know, what life was like for us. Um, but you know, we Irish, we always have um, a way of making ourselves feel better. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. usually it's song. But okay, um, I was thinking maybe it was drink, but it's song. <laughs> yes, drink too, drink, <laughs> drink too, too, of course. <laughs> Of course, so of course, we all know that God created whiskey so we wouldn't take over the world. I mean. <laughs> so, uh, so at any rate, and speaking of whiskey and speaking of tunes that lift your spirits, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be an event here in Portsmouth coming up uh, the day before St. Patty's Day. Okay. Um, and it's, that's a Saturday and um, uh, History Alive is going to kick it off. Okay. Uh, yes, it's, it's our the annual Body Tunes and Sea Shanty Show. <laughs> so it's a little bit of adult fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this year we're having it at um, Post Secondary uh, Brewing. Okay. Which right up right up the road. Right. Um, yes. And they're, um, they've opened their doors to us and we're gonna do an hour show. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this establishment, but um, it, it's only the, the liquor, uh, not, not liquor, actually, beer. beer. Yeah, that, the actually, ale. in a yes. little bit, we're going to hear from one of the owners. Yes. Come on, tell oh. us about it. Oh, all right. So, you know, you got to bring your own food, which right. actually works out well for a, for a body tune show because <laughs> uh, we don't have waitresses running around on that. But, yeah. but it's, it'll be a lot of fun. It always is every year. So, what time so, does that start? It starts at three. It's, go, it's going from three to four because it's like the prelude mm -hmm. to all the other fantastic things that are happening in honor of St. Patty on that night yeah. and, that, and that late afternoon um, here in Portsmouth. All the different uh, establishments, whether it be uh, you know restaurants or pubs or whatever, mm -hmm. they're all gonna have drink specials, uh, 619 Cantina, they're gonna have a Jameson Margarita, whatever that is, <laughs> uh, if you can imagine. And so there's gonna be all sorts of, of different things. And I think the public house is having quite a grand affair, actually. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna hear from them a little bit later. So, well, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I won't steal their thunder. <laughs> well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Now, will you, will you be performing? Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course, okay. of course. <laughs> Telling some stories and jokes? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I, I have quite a few jokes and quite a few songs. Mine tend to be the bawdiest because yep. I don't know why. Well, Just I... Because. That wouldn't surprise me, Having actually. Having met me, you might understand. <laughs> no, I do understand. Well, thanks so much for, uh, for coming out and telling us about it. And it's, that's going to be Saturday, uh, March 16th. That's correct. All right. From 3 to 4, you can catch us at Post Secondary Brewing. And, um, and we hope to see you there, sir. All right. Well, maybe I'll try to get out there. <laughs> and if you're looking for something great to do on St. Patrick's Day weekend, that's Saturday, March 16th. Come over to the porch that into Old Town. On St. Patrick's Day or any other day of the year, Old Town Portsmouth is home to some great restaurants. Here's Kelly Bottelere and Lyle Lee to tell us about one of them, Old Town Public House. Kelly, Lyle, welcome to Portsmouth Now. Pleasure to be here. Good to have you. Now, you're part of one of the great restaurants in Old Town, which is Old Town Public House. Where is that located exactly for our viewers who may not be familiar with Old Town? 467 Court Street, Portsmouth, Virginia. Okay, and that's sort of right across from the old courthouse, the Portsmouth uh, Center for the Arts. Yes, indeed. Great. So, I know that you're involved in the St. Patrick's Day uh, event. So yes. tell us what, what you're doing for that event. Absolutely. So this year we have Kevin Brinson playing downstairs um, from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. And upstairs at our other private venue, the famous venue, it will be open to the public that evening. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have DJ Ponfetti um, playing okay. from 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. Oh, great. That's yeah. fantastic. And on actual St. Patrick's Day, we are also going to be having an, another live entertainment act because it's Sunday. Right. Um, and we're going to have Jules Gat from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. at Old Town Public House as well. Fantastic. Now, you have entertainment there a lot, don't you? Is this something that happens throughout the year? It does, absolutely. This coming March 1st at the famous venue, we have Savannah Dexter. She's a national act, and we have tickets up on Eventbrite for that. Okay. And um, we also have Celeste Kellogg coming on March March 2nd. So okay. we have a lot of upcoming music um, and it's something we try to do regularly. That's fantastic. Now, if people want to find out about the schedule, they would just go to your website, I guess. Um, so you can follow along with us on Facebook, Instagram, um, and any ticketed events we do post about on our website. All right, well, tell me a little bit about your restaurant. What is What are your specialties? You, you're the, the chef, aren't you? Yes, I am. So, <laughs> so um, on Mondays, we do something uh, 
the barbecue brisket sandwich, and also we do um, a platter. Um, Tuesdays, we do Taco Tuesdays. Um, Wednesday, we do uh, pizzas. Um, Thursday, we do, oh, kind of forgot that, Phillies. Okay. Uh, anything pertaining to Phillies, uh, pizza, wraps. Okay. Um, and um, and the rest of the week, and so on, so on. You have a pretty wide venue. I think last time I went there a few months ago, I got some uh, uh, shrimp and grits. Yeah. Yes. It was delicious. Yes, <laughs> Great. yes. Um, yes, uh, what we do with that is we have the grits. Um, they're not real cheesy. Um, we put that in the center. We make our, um, our little, kind of like a jambalaya. Mm -hmm. We put that around um, onions, asparagus, um, and do we sausage. Yep. And do we do a couple of shrimp on top of that and to uh, spare the bread. But it's, it's great, it really is. Now the atmosphere, how would you describe the atmosphere in the public house? That Very sounds, lively. Yeah. It's definitely more of like some place you go to hang out and catch up with friends. Yeah. It's definitely like a welcoming atmosphere, like come as you are, you know, we'd love to have you. Great. So. Now you mentioned the famous. I know that was probably named after uh, the big department store that exactly. was down here for decades. Yes. And this is what used to be asked in Masonic Hall that's above? It the is, rest okay. absolutely. So we do private events there mm -hmm. available for weddings, birthday parties, baby showers, anything you name it. Um, and it's available for a rental. And um, we also do national back, national acts up there and okay. things like that so yeah and you this is opened recently it is has. yes so it's about one year yes one year now yeah okay. so pretty much you know are there are you closed any days of the week or you... um so the famous isn't actually open any days of the week right. it's only available so, through right. private event booking however when we do host these events with like They're bands there. and stuff that's when the public can come out okay. and really experience it now is the public house open seven days a week or is that it okay. is 11 a.m till 2 a.m oh wow okay yeah. so if you Leave the movies or just down here looking for something to do later. Exactly. Place to go. And our kitchen is open until midnight, which is rare to find out. That there. is rare to find. Usually yeah. they're closing like 10 or 11. Exactly. That's great. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by to tell us about this. Is Absolutely. It, anything else coming up that you'd like people to know about? Um, um, uh, soon we're about to have uh, Chef Linden. He's doing a uh, a menu from five to 10. Yes, oh. every week. And it's a, gonna be an extra menu in addition to our standard menu, okay. um, where we're doing sample items to put on the new menu. We're in the middle of a new menu oh, revamp. Okay, so people so, come down there maybe have an influence on what you're offering exactly. later on. Exactly, so you can come out and comment on the Facebook, let us know you loved it. Right now we're featuring a smoked Bira wings. Um, oh, wow. So <laughs> everyone, the new Bira tacos, the new thing. and. They're smoked and then grilled, and you get the consomme on the side to dip it in. It's absolutely delicious. That sounds delicious. Yes. Well, all right, well, thank you so much for coming here, really. And really, if you're in Old Town, be sure to check out the Old Town Public House on Court Street. Please, we'd love to have you. Come see us. <laughs> Susan Slate joins us next to tell us about another great Old Town establishment, post-secondary brewing. Susan, welcome to Portsmouth Now. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, you and your husband, Topher, have an establishment here in Old Town called? Post-Secondary Brewing. Okay, now that's on High Street. Yes, it's in the 700 block. Okay. Right next to Cure and Bloom. Okay, so you opened recently, this is past year, right? We opened April 1st, so Great. we're coming and up on our one year. All right, and it, by the company, your brewing company. So, yes. <laughs> so why did you and Topher decide to open a brewing company? Um, mostly, my husband's been home brewing for about 15 years. Um, we really enjoy beer, <laughs> and um, so for about like eight years ago, we just started talking about it, and we've been planning it. And of course, COVID hit, and that kind of put a damper on some things. Yeah. But um, once the world was kind of coming back, we decided to go for it and pull the trigger. And here you are. And here we are today, yeah. <laughs> Took a little bit longer than what we had anticipated, but yeah, here we are. Well, that's great. Now, I understand you, you're involved a little bit, uh, the, the big St. Patrick's Day event that takes place, I think the Saturday of St. Patrick's Day. Yes. That actually is gonna kick off at your establishment, right? Yes, yes, I'm not sure what time yet, um, okay. but yes, we'll be um, with History Alive, we'll be performing, doing a bagpipe right. show. They'll start with us and then they'll continue down the street. Okay, so tell us about what you offer. You, beer, of course. So mm -hmm. um, what are 
What's your favorite fruit? What would you recommend if somebody's coming in? Uh, my personal favorite are, I enjoy dark beers. I know that's not everybody's thing, um, like but we that. always <laughs> um, have a dark beer on tap. We rotate a lot, mm -hmm. um, so if there's one particular style you like, there's gonna be something for you. Um, you know, we do sours, we have Pilsner, ales, um, you know, stouts, um, we've done porters. So there's something for everybody and every taste. That's great. Yeah. Now I know you don't serve like dinner. You no, have... we do not serve food, we serve snacks, but okay. you are free to bring in food. Um, you know, from any of the great restaurants down High Street, there's, oh, okay. there's so many of them. Pick up a snack that, and bring it in yeah, and have some absolutely. great beer. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we have food trucks from time to time, mm -hmm. but mostly we re rely on the, the restaurants down the street. Uh, do, do you have like a number? How many different varieties do you, do you have? Um, we Right now we have 10 taps. Okay. Yeah, great. so we always have 10 taps and 10 beers on, on tap. They're just always rotating and different. So when are you open? Um, we are open Wednesday through Sundays. Mm -hmm. So Wednesdays and Thursdays we open four to nine. Mm -hmm. Fridays we're four to ten. Um, Saturdays um, twelve to ten, and then Sundays twelve to seven. Okay, that sounds so, great. Yeah. So if you want some great beer, mm -hmm. old come on down. Yeah. Okay. You'll probably see me or. <laughs> I only have two employees, so I'm usually there a lot of the time. So, do you have a website that people can go to? We do. It's um, postsecondarybrewing.com. Mm -hmm. um, it has a list of all our, our events and our beers that are on tap at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also um, send us a note if you need to or you have a question. Now, you mentioned events. Do you have live music, things like that, we occasionally? We do um, occasionally have live music. We occasionally have trivia nights. Um, and that's, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Something to do while you're enjoying yeah. your beer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we try and get local um, local artists and stuff to come in. So we're that's supporting, great. definitely Portsmouth. Yeah, there's a real vibe down here in Old Town. Oh, yeah, I mean, with the, yeah, yeah, with the restaurants and things like that. Well, great, well, thanks so much for stopping by and talking yeah. to us. And really, if you love a great homemade brew, check out Post Secondary Brewing in Old Town Portsmouth on High Street. March is Women's History Month, and thanks to our friends at History Alive, our next guest is someone from Portsmouth's historic past, Mary Cook. Mary, welcome to Portsmouth Now. Thank you. Now, tell a little bit about your story. You were born here in Portsmouth? I was born right here in Portsmouth in 1840, the child of two Scottish immigrants. My father was a carpenter, but his true love was music, and I used to watch him pipe reels, jigs, straths race, anything you can imagine. And I just would watch his fingers dance over the, over the pipes. And my mom would watch me and she would say, now Mary, you know you cannot play the pipes being a wee lass and those being an instrument of war. But my da taught me anyway. <laughs> but see, it turns out my mom was right. Mm. Because what with me being a tiny little girl, I like the bag, my father's bagpipes was as big as my torso at the time. <laughs> and what with me having to wear a corset everywhere back then, there was no way I could infl inflate the bag. So my dad, being the great carpenter that he was, made me my own set of wee tiny little pipes <laughs> and taught me to play in secret. Now, sadly, my parents both died in the yellow fever epidemic and I ended up in the orphanage, that's still there, that big yellow building on North Street, yeah. where Dr. and Mrs. White took great care of me and all the other orphans. And the only thing I had left of my parents and my, my fatherland was my pipes. So I'd sneak down uh, Dinwoody Street and sit on the beach that used to be there over by Swimming Point on foggy days yeah. and know that my dad was looking down on me from a better place. And so that's why I still play them today. You still play them today? Absolutely. And you'll be back a little bit later at the end of the show to play for us. Yes, hopefully. Well, thank you and thanks for joining us, Mary. It was very Mary. nice meeting Good you. Good to meet you too. Our final guest today is Erin Colson to tell us what's happening this March at the Children's Museum of Virginia. Erin, <laughs> welcome back to Portsmouth Now. Thanks for having me, Rob. So I see you have a book again. I do. Um, 
You're reading? <laughs> I'm always reading. We're always reading at the Children's Museum of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And right now we are hosting The Pigeon Comes to Portsmouth, a Mo Willems exhibit, <clears throat> which is based on the books by Mo Willems, like Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Okay. In fact, there's a giant bus in the exhibit that you can drive. So, if you're not a pigeon. <clears throat> if you're not a pigeon, for sure. <laughs> so we're really excited for families to come and enjoy the activities. It's everything from illustration to storytelling to play. Great, great. Now, what else? I know that like, March is Women's History Month. So do you have anything related to women his women's history coming up? Absolutely. So for the month of March, we'll be highlighting different women scientists in our STEM studio and their work. Um, so each week, kids will get a chance to do activities that are related to the work of female scientists. Cool. Yeah, we're really excited to share that with kids and their families. Now, I think you have another event that I know you're really excited about. Yes. It has to do with art. We so. do. So it's also Youth in the Arts Month, the month of March. So we're going to be hosting Portsmouth Public School Art Show Award winners, K through sixth grade, at the museum. So those kids' work is on display right now in the libraries, and then will be coming. The award winners will be coming to the library, um, coming to the museum for display. So it'll be on display at the museum. Absolutely, that's pretty good to be like in first grade and have your work already in a museum. Exactly, and then <laughs> families will get a chance to see other kids' art on display, and hopefully it'll encourage some other kids to maybe try out their artistic abilities. Fantastic. Now, will that be on display like for the whole month of March? For or March. In April. Okay, yeah. two months of display. Great. Absolutely. And we're also going to be celebrating Youth in the Arts and Women's History Month on Saturday, March 9th. For our second Saturday, we're mm -hmm. going to have Women in the Community Day. So we'll have all kinds of different vendors and activities going on inside the museum as part of your regular admission. Great. Now, now what, uh, what are the hours now this time of year? Sure. We're open Wednesday through Sunday from mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. And online ticketing is required, so just go to childrensmuseumva.com and reserve your tickets in advance. All right, well thank you for coming here and telling us about it. And really, if you have not been to the Children's Museum of Virginia, you don't know what you're missing. So really, check it out. Thanks for joining us, Aaron. Thanks, Rob. That's it for our show today. If you'd like to find out more about any of the events featured on today's show, simply log on to www.portsvacation.com and then come to Portsmouth, where if you give us a day, we'll give you a vacation. I'm Rob Lauer. Join me next month for the April episode of Portsmouth Now, and we'll close out our show with Mary Cook playing the pipes. Mm -hmm.